Stephanie Frappat would lead an all-female re um, referee to officiate that match. She will be assisted by Noiza Bach of Brazil, as well as Mexico's Karen Diaz Medina. All three female referees will be at the center stage for the first time ever. Remember, Stephanie Frappat also made history last week when Mexico took on Poland, a match that ended goalless, as she became the first female referee to officiate in, uh, at the World Cup when she became the fourth um, official for that match. This time around, all the female referees are taking center stage right from the center of the pitch to the lines women. It will be female referees, the first ever at the FIFA World Cup. What do you make of this historic decision by um, FIFA? It's a, great, it's a great movement mm -hmm. by FIFA to actually give room to all our f uh, the female counterparts to yeah. fixture. Frappas has been very has been doing well. The records are just coming. <laughs> the Tatiyo has been doing so well, mm -hmm. and so at the highest stage like this, it's an opportunity for him to showcase the kind of talent that he has, that she has in yes. controlling the football pitch mm -hmm. among the players and managing not just showing to the world that he can do beyond managing the women for football and going uh -huh. to s do well at, the world, at the world cup i hope to see her do well at the world cup there okay talking about um stephanie frappart that's the french referee um right there on your screen you should also understand that you know she's um had several records in time past let me run you through some of them before I review senegal's uh, r records or record win now over equator in terms of their second round um, qualification quickly um, we had stephanie frappart becoming the first female referee at the World Cup, I talked about that earlier when she was the fourth official for the match against Mexico against Poland. She was also the first female referee to officiate in the men's UEFA Champions League match uh, in 2020 when she took on, um, you know, the, the game that had Juventus against Dynamo Kiev. That was a game that Juventus won by three goals to nil. She was also the center referee for the UEFA Super Cup in 2019 um, between Liverpool and Chelsea. And you know how that went Liverpool's way. She was also the first female referee to officiate at a World Cup qualifying match. And that was between Netherlands and Latvia uh, with the Dutch team winning that. So many records. Do not forget she also officiated the Women's World Cup final in 2019 between the United States of America as well as Netherlands. I'm talking about the Women's World Cup final. So, so many records for the French woman right there. And she's not the only um, female referee we should expect in terms of center referees. You have three of them, Africa's own, Randan, um, you know, referees also there, Salima Mukasanga. She's also one of um, the center referees um, when it comes to women at this year's World Cup. You also have Japan's Yoshimi Yamashita, Yamashita now, um, who is also there. Those three women, Stephanie Frappat, um, Salima Mukasanga, as well as Japan's Yoshimi Yamashita, all three women will officiate at this um, year's World Cup at some point in terms of being center referees. This is definitely good, and it will encourage more women um, to, you know, take officiating as um, a means of livelihood in terms of becoming professional um, officials or offici um, officials at the World Cup and all other, you know, tournaments. Well, let's turn our attention now to the um, on-field action we saw yesterday. Senegal making Africa proud, living up to their billion as um, the top-ranked team in Africa as well as being the defending champions of the African Cup of Nations. It was meant to be a difficult match, and um, it was a bit difficult, but they were able to rally around and um, get the win. 2-1 that ended with skipper um, Khalidou Kulubali getting the winning goal for Senegal as they became the first African team to book their place in the next round of the World Cup. What, what do you make of this win? You know, they had their backs against the wall. Um, against the Netherlands in the opening game, they were not bad as well. They played well, but... I mean, Edward Mendy had um, a very good day, so to speak. But they rallied back with a routine win over Qatar. And when the die was cast, when push came to shove, they sh showed up yesterday as well. And that's, and that's, that's, a, good, that's a good thing to the, to the Senegalese. Mm -hmm. Because looking at what they play in the first match again, the, against the, uh, Dutch the, the yeah. Netherlands, you, I, I didn't see much of a push in the front line. In mm -hmm. the front line. So it's, it's more like they are playing collectively from the back to yes. the midfield. But at the end of that, Final the, line, the pressure of the absence of Sadio Mane was mm -hmm. actually playing it on was obvious. Ismail Asa uh -huh. and all of those, their for forwards. Bull idea. Yeah, mm -hmm. bull idea. So at the moment after that match, I believe maybe something would have, maybe Mane himself would have called them and uh, told them, see guys, you can them. do it. Okay. You have to let go of my absence and focus on this game. And that's what you saw when they came against Qatar. Qatar. And they mm -hmm. came out in, in, the, in the blistering form. Yeah. And the forwards, were, they, they delivered. The same way we saw even at, at the uh, match against uh, Ecuador. Ecuador, yeah. Ismail Asa made the move.
for him to have gotten that penalty. Uh, and that the, the penalty him. itself, I and mean, the under itself. pressure, yes. being so able to dispatch. They, they played with the mind that they need to deliver mm -hmm. as African champion. And which, of course, yes, yes, um, yesterday they, they, they live up to expectation. And I, I say congratulations once again to them. England awaits in the round of 16. Yes, I mean, Sadio Mane will still be a big loss regardless. But do you think, on the evidence of what we've seen over three games from Senegal and England, um, the Senegalese stand a chance? Of course, in, in this World Cup tournament, uh -huh. <laughs> a lot of surprises are happening. Apparently. And I'm not going to be shocked at all uh -huh. to see the Sen Senegalese out beat the, the English team. Okay. If not for the pressure of the media mm -hmm. around Gareth Southgate, for him to involve uh, Phil Fordin, he, yeah. he would have been slack in bringing in the same traditional um, uh -huh. lineup that he has been using for long okay. and without twisting its, its, its formation. But look at the, the uh, CC. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the coach of Senegal, yeah. he was is ready to actually jog around around the squad, okay. knowing that they have the pressure is off them now. Yes. They are playing against England. England the amount okay. of the pressure will be on England, and they will play le less of a pressure. Okay. But they will always going to take their chances, okay. and their back line is well solid well enough solid, to yeah. actually cage these the three lions. Harry, Harry Kane. <laughs> Well, let's move now to England, talking about the three lines as they are called. England was able to dispatch. Well, the, the Welsh team is not you know, a formidable side, um, despite the presence of Gareth Bale. That was a routine win, three goals to nil. And it was Marcus Rashford's um, brace that got them over the line. Phil Folding got his first um, you know, um, World Cup goal as well. Um, routine win, you want to see. Um, is that the, the, the match we saw yesterday, is that an evidence of what's to come in terms of the likes of Rashford, you know, maybe Bukhara Saka, Phil Foden, getting the goals for England. You talked about Kane being scoreless. Um, it looks like Kane is struggling. We know quite well he's still is battling with ankle injury at this point. But of course, it's an that's that's what's that's why the guts from mm -hmm. the coach now comes into play. play yeah. But you know, what is uh, permanent in, in, in a footballer is mm -hmm. class. Class, yeah. Their form can be temporary. Exactly. And irrespective of his scoreless appearance mm -hmm. for England so far in the World Cup, Harry Kane has been producing those assists. Okay. He has been carrying the ball. He has been sustaining the ball mm -hmm. at, the at, the, at the front. And so he's still bringing in what he's supposed to bring in into the, the drive, team. Yeah. Except the fact that he's not still scoring the goal. Okay. Which, of course, you might, you might, just like Cristiano Ronaldo, the guy might not score for the whole of the group stages. And but then let the guy appear at the knockout stages and mm -hmm. the guy will be in blistering form. Okay. And that's what, the, that's what will be on the coach now. That's okay. Now, these guys... What Marcus Rashford is scoring, mm -hmm. Phil Foden is coming on yes. brightly. Bukayo Saka is doing well. So why not we surround him, them, I mean, with uh, Harry Kane in front, mm -hmm. and let's see what they can do in the first an hour of the match. Okay. And if there's nothing, then they can look at Callum Whitson because all of exactly. the all of their reserves are there. still there. They mm -hmm. are not still trying to leverage on them. And then when they are coming into the fourth, fourth, fourth play, they mm -hmm. are not still bringing up the best the that best. Uh, Gary Salgo would have expected from a striker. To pull in the goals. To pull in goals. Okay. Well, let's turn our attention now to today's matches, and we have, uh, you know, astronaut, um, you know, great matches that will definitely determine the fate of some players. Lionel Messi is 35, and um, Argentina will be taking on Poland. The big question is, can Argentina get the win they need to progress to the next round? If they lose this match, it means um, they an early exit for Lionel Messi and company. And that may just be his last appearance at the World Cup. Remember, the Polish team is one of three sides that are yet to concede goal at this year's tournament. So it shows you the magnitude of um, you know, the challenge before the Argentine team in terms of breaking down the Polish defense. But Lionel Messi has shown over the years that he can do it over and over again. The big question is, can he get it done today? Of course, you, you don't expect anything less from Lionel uh -huh. Messi on a very good day for him yes. um, and the Argentine squad. But you have to put in place, just like what you mentioned, the yes. Polish team has not considered uh -huh. the first and the second. And that the more you grow in the tournament, mm -hmm. the more it brings more confidence in you that, yes, you can actually do it against, against even the Argentine team. Yeah. So once they can actually, but the first half of play, they can actually cut the Argentine striking force, the pressure yeah. will be on them. Mm -hmm. And it's possible you like you see the likes of Lewandowski, who is still um, I mean, resting on his um, uh, first, first World Cup goal, goal, goal. to uh -huh. possibly badge another goal in that match. Uh -huh. So, But it's going to be a tight encounter, uh -huh. very dicey for Lionel Messi and the rest of them, for them to put up what they need to put up to get the maximum three point they need. Oh, against Mexico, for example, you know, Argentina, Mexico, the 2 0 win. We, we saw that the Mexicans were a bit difficult to break down, you know, in the final third from, 
you know, the box eight in and it had to take long range shots. Uh, Lionel Messi's um, goal was, you know, outside the box. Even that of Enzo was just at the edge when he cut in and, you know, that call. Line. So are we looking at the possibility wherein the, the Polish line would either play a high line or a mid-low block and, you know, it has to, Argentina will be forced to resort to long range strikes to be able to get a goal? Whichever, the, the, whichever this Argentine team mm -hmm. has the capacity to score, Long range in the box, in, okay. in play, in, match, play yeah. in the box to score the goal, and then the long range opportunity oh. to score. Okay, and that's where you will now look at the concentration of the Polish goalkeeper. That's mm -hmm. Chesney, yeah. Who perf whose performance today is will be very important, important. to uh -huh. the to the progress of his team to top the group. Because once they lose against the under time, they become automatically become second, uh -huh. and there will be pressure on them to meet with France, uh -huh. who will be, uh, possibly, who will obviously be the top of the other group. Also, so, depending on the results in between, you know, other teams. Of course. So now, it now the, if Saudi Arabia beats Mexico, uh -huh. then Saudi Arabia will qualify uh -huh. with Argentina if Argentina should win. win. And so there is no resting on their horse they've not exactly. actually achieved anything uh -huh. much because of the pressure of what the group is saying uh -huh. so they need to be at their best their goalkeeper i believe we, we, we has a lot of things to do for them to get what they need to get to cross to the second, second round, round of the tournament okay. the same thing with Lewandowski uh -huh. and their defense who has been solid i hope they will also continue to be solid against the Argentine today okay well um that group definitely all four teams in that group still have the opportunity to qualify although that of mexico is extremely slim, it must be said. Saudi Arabia will be taking on Mexico, and for the Saudis, um, what will be the gain to defeat Argentina and yeah. they fail to qualify <laughs> from that same group? So um, they have their uh, destiny in their hands. They need to win against Mexico or probably get a draw and see how the other result fares. But the best chance for them is to get a win over Mexico um, to be able to progress. Let's see how that happens. Remember, you can win amazing prizes on the show right here on, on the arena as I'm Ivan TV will definitely reward you for your correct predictions. There are four matches taking place today, and you just need to predict the scoreline of two of those four correctly, and you stand a chance to win amazing prizes, just as I said earlier. You have the matches right there on your screen. I'll roll them out for you once again. And there are the four matches taking place today. You have Australia against Denmark, Tunisia against France, um, Poland against Argentina, Saudi Arabia against Mexico. Mm -hmm.